These numbers are great. Michael really does draw a crowd. <laughs> well, welcome to today's webinar, um, Layering Reports and Charts with Web Intelligence with Michael Ward. Um, I've, my name is Anne. I've been with Accelerate for 10 years, and I've had the pleasure of working with Michael for about the last six months when he started teaching business objects classes for us, and now we're lucky enough to get him to do these free webinars. Uh, and um, if you haven't been in a session with Michael yet, you are in for a treat, but I feel like a lot of, uh, a lot of you already know Michael, and that's why you're back. And uh, just in case you were wondering, you will receive a copy of this webinar when we're finished. We'll email it to you. Uh, we also will store it on our website in our library slash videos. And we keep all of our webinars, even Michael's previous webinars, on our Accelerate YouTube channel. So if you missed any of them, you can always go back and watch them. And just to tell you a little bit about Accelerate, um, we've been in business for 18 years. Uh, we do a lot of private customized training uh, on site all over the US and worldwide. And <clears throat> now obviously we do all of our classes online for now. And um, besides the Webby classes, we also teach uh, programming classes, JavaScript libraries, database classes, data science classes, and of course the data visualization classes like Webby, Tableau, and Power BI. And uh, after this uh, session, if you feel like you just need a little bit more of Michael Ward and um, the Webby classes, we do have uh, private on-site classes that we can deliver for your team. Uh, it's all online, um, on your timeline, can be customized for you. Or if you are an individual just looking for training, Michael will be doing another open enrollment session. Uh, this time it'll be October 6th through the 9th for the uh, intro and intermediate class, and then October 15th and 16th for the advanced class. So we'll be sending out a little bit more information about that, but uh, no matter if you have a private customized class or you take the open enrollment for individuals class, not only do you get Michael Ward as your instructor, you get his coveted materials, his best practices guide, uh, cross-reference guide, and master list of features. Um, so without further ado, let me turn this over to Michael, who is going to dazzle you with charts and layers. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna okay. go ahead. Uh, absolutely, let me just stop my webcam here. You don't need to see me. Okay, Michael, you should, should be kicking over to you. Kicking over to me, good. Let me get where I need it to be when I open it up here. Yep, perfect. And let me share my... You. Share my screen, and everybody can see my screen now. Hopefully, yep. I think we can. Oh, I can see it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mute myself, but I'm here if you need anything. So thank you so okay, much. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Wow, what a great turnout again. Uh, since we started the webinars in March, we've been drawing over 400 people for the, each of the webinar series. That means I'm giving you some great content. You've got opportunity to grab my email address right now for follow-up questions, and some of you have done that already. And I love hearing from you because that's what gives me ideas on new presentations, new features, uh, you know, that are available. We'll be doing one soon, and we'll get into uh, the magic of breaks. We'll show you how to do ranking on subtotals, which somebody from one of these webinars asked for as well. So what we're going to get into today is I'm going to talk about how to build a, a, a report or a, basically a document with a series of reports and charts. Now, I did a presentation about a year, year and a half ago that my staff and I built called Now You See It, Now You Don't. It was a very simple, straightforward feature where you would use the little drill bar functionality that exists in reporting on the top of a report viewer window, but it was very limited. So we needed to expand on it and give you something much more complex or from a delivery perspective, but easy to develop. So lo and behold, we came up with this presentation, which I think you're going to enjoy. We're going to build some reports and charts, put them next to each other, and then what we're going to do is we're going to create an input control gadget. We're just going to create a dummy variable, local variable, which I happen to call which will set up a bunch of menu items associated with it that'll identify which report or which chart you want. And by virtue of you selecting that option in the little input control drop-down window, it will pop that one up. You'll see little marquees show up across the top. A neat little trick I'm going to show you that I've done in some of my other presentations as, as well. And then we're going to show you an op option where not only can I display the individual ones by layering them, but maybe I want to see all four at once. How do I do that? 
amazingly enough, it's uh, simple enough to do, and that's part of what I try to do in a lot of these webinars, is make it so it's easy for you to follow through and, and develop these. I don't want to throw too much complexity in there, and I think you'll see the simplicity of this one, how easy it is to layer things, take advantage of input controls, and do some really cool reporting. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go out there now into Webby. Let me get into Webby and build a quick report that we're going to duplicate or replicate multiple times so that we can get in and get some reports and charts built. And we're going to show you some pretty cool things that you can do. And simple stuff to do using just existing business objects features, nothing new or whatever, but things that have been around for quite a while. So let me just create a real quick query here, bring in the objects. I like to do this for review rather than have it front loaded. So if we get some lighter users out there that kind of refreshes your memory on building a report. Okay. We'll pick our universe. Notice the newer version. I'm running SP7 here. Supports text and Excel and some other options as well. We only care about our universe at this point. What I call the souped up fashion. We've just updated it and so on. And let's build a, re a, a report block that we're going to create multiples out of. So we'll bring over a year and we'll bring over our state. And we'll bring over our measures. Maybe we'll bring all three of the four. One of the four two features, if you double click on the folder, you get everything from in that folder deposited into the results objects window, which worked nicely. Some other little things you'll notice as well. It's not going to make, we're not going to make it super fancy, but let's take this report and run it. And what we're going to do is we're going to divide it into, into four separate blocks. And again, it gives me an opportunity to show you some of the really cool things that we can do as well. So here's a report right now that we have. Okay, so what I'm going to do is a right-click copy and a right-click paste. Oop, didn't get it quite right there for the paste option. And we're going to take the one on the right side and let's take out uh, quantity sold column. We'll remove, uh, actually it's easier just to right-click delete. So we'll get rid of those columns that way. When you're in Chrome, it's a little more finicky about dragging things out. So if I just do a right-click delete, it gets them down there. And what we want to do is take the one on the right. We're going to convert that into a cross table, pivot table. Very common way to display data. We'll do a uh, uh, turn into, and we'll pick the cross table format. We'll roll the dice and see what we get. And lo and behold, we've got what we wanted. So I have a, a, a vertical table on the left, which we're going to break by year because we don't want it set up that way. Take advantage of our awesome analysis tool of our features uh, where we'll do a break on it. So I have my typical uh, vertical table on the left side, which we're going to move down to the bottom. We'll take the cross table report and we'll move that over to here. And then we'll do some more layering, some other things as well. But let's get our blocks built. Uh, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to take the title out. Usually I would leave it in there, but it'll be easier for us to see how the pieces fit together later. And I have the finished product so that I don't have to get every little piece in there. Uh, and formatting wise, I always like to get rid of the header block that's up on top here. So if we go to page setup rather, for the header, and we'll change these all to zeros, get rid of it completely. Different ways of doing the same thing so that that's gone, and it gives me a little bit more room. Okay, so there we go. Now what we need to do is we need to build two charts on the right side representing the same general data. So maybe we want to create a pie chart with state and maybe margin just to be a little bit different. We'll put that one over here on the bottom half of this one. And we'll do a right-click, turn into, and we'll convert that quickly into our good old pie chart. Easily enough to do. Spitting out all your blocks is a very easy thing to do here. And there we go. Look how nice it is. Look at the magical, the more robust colors. As you move through SP6 and 7, they've done a lot of nice enhancements and things to the look and feel of things. You notice the template color is different. We're used to having blue with white values showing up here and so on. Some of the little subtleties. The other thing I need to do is create a 3D column chart, one of my favorites. And for that 3D column, I want to have year and state and margin. Another block over to the right. We'll bring it over. Easiest way to create charts, start with a report and turn them over. So that one's missing my margin. It didn't bring it in. That's the easiest way to do things. We'll drag this in, take advantage of the drag, dragging and dropping functionality. Then we'll take the one on the right here. And we're going to do a turn into, and we're going to turn that one into a uh, let's just go to more transformations, and let's pick the uh, column chart, actually one of my favorites, the 3D column chart, which exists right here. And you'll notice, well, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at what happens when I do this. So you'll convert it in, but it's going to be a flat 3D chart, so it's really not 3D. This is one of the four 
features that we run into that where it doesn't separate them out anymore. So, so those of you that might be lighter users, to restructure a chart of any kind with a right click, you use your classic assigned data, which can also be used on report blocks for converting cross tables and other types of blocks. And we want to have state as our primary category. So I deleted the year. We want margin. We want the region color, which later becomes category access to two to be our year. And I very easily restructure things that way. And look how nice this is when it comes back up. And lo and behold, there we go. Okay. So I've got my uh, cross table, my vertical table, my 3D column, and my pie. I put this next to the cross table report because a 3D column, in effect, is exactly that. Notice not all the values are showing up. That's a byproduct of charts being a little bit too small. Sometimes we've got to stretch them out just that little bit more to get all the values to show up, which in this case means then I've got to move my pie chart down a little bit because it overlaps a little bit there as well. So very common thing for that. So now if you look at it, we're in pretty good shape here. Okay. So what we've done now is we've created four distinct blocks. The problem is I don't want them at the same time. I want to see one at a time or it could be more than one, but one at a time is what I'm doing for this particular example. Very easy to follow the logic. Either one of them or an option that will display any one of them or an all option. It will give me all of them. Okay. So first thing I need to do is I'm going to duplicate this report tab. We're going to need it later on. We're going to have to duplicate all of the report and chart blocks so we can bring them in later on for the all option when we want to bring all of them in. So the first thing I need to do is I need to define a temporary variable that's going to be used to hold the input control menu item. This is a variable with multiple values, if you want to look at it that way. So let's go to the left side under variables. We'll do a new. And let's call this new variable. I just call it switch because it's a switch, but I could call it menu if I wanted to as well. In the latest couple of service pack levels, there's now description boxes for variables. That is really cool. So I could call this my, my menu item if I wanted to. A good idea to put documentation in. And I'm just going to set it equal to double quote, space, double quote, a blank. It's a dummy variable. There's nothing in it. But what I'm going to do is create an input control gadget using that variable, and it's going to be holding all of my menu items. All right? So we'll do this. We'll checkbox it to make sure. Okay? And lo and behold, we close it all out. Now I have a variable over here called switch. Notice how the pop-up little help message comes up. It's, it's always done that in business objects and Webby, showing us what the current expression is All right, for that one as well. So now what I need to do is I need to develop a input control gadget uh, that will allow me to set up menu items corresponding to it. All right. So what, uh, what we're going to do is as follows. Let's uh, go to input controls up here. Well, a couple places. I'm trying to think of the best place. We'll go to analysis. We'll create a new input control here. Uh, we'll just do an input control, and we'll do it for the switch. Okay. We'll next do it. And do I want it to be a combo box, which is single value or a multiple value? I could do that if I wanted. We'll do combo box only. It's called switch here. So combo box allows me to look at it, but only pick one. Okay. List of values is going to be custom. So we'll come back in here. What we'll do is we'll click the little gray botted box. And we're going to put in the entries of what we want for switch to be. So I want to put in um, vertical table. I'll put vertical table as one of my values in there. I'll put cross table. Got to remember how you spell them. You can stack these up all together with semicolons and do them all at once. The problem I've run into is it puts an extra space occasionally out there. You lose track of it. And it gets a little confusing. We'll do a pie chart as another entry. And we'll do a 3D column. 3D column. column chart and we'll put that value in there and lo and behold now we have all of them defined Do I want allow selection of all values no not here I want to have my own option for all that which we're going to go back and put in, in a minute that allows me to select all values I don't have it set up that way and I want to have a default value and what I'm going to do is the default value for me is going to be vertical we'll call it vertical table So vertical table is what I want for that one. We've got to go back up to custom because I skipped over that one. We're going to add one last one in there called all, but it's our own all, so we can better control it. And there we go. So now I've got all my menu items defined that I want. And when we look through here, there's a default 
allow selection is unchecked for that one, and lo and behold, we're ready to go. All right, so now what we need to be able to do is we need to come up with a way to, based on what input control gadget they select, to control it. So before we open it up and start using it, we got to set it. So what I want to do is, like this, we're gonna, we want to be able to hide an entire block. You have the ability to hide individual columns, hide individual cells, hide sections and whatnot, and so on. We're going to do this by doing a right click, and down near the bottom, there's a format table at the bottom is one way, or there's a hide you can go to directly. We'll go to format table. I just like to do it from that particular window. And at the bottom of the general tab, you'll see hide when the following is true. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to hide the cross table when they've not, when they've selected anything but cross table. Remember the menu item is called cross table for that one. So what's the formula going to be look like? Let's do it FX to help. What we want to do is we want to say switch. If the switch is not equal to, then we're going to put in double quotes. Uh, this is what? Uh, this is my cross table. Nope, got to spell it correctly. Make sure it's spelled up. P R O S S T A B L E and a closing double quote. And there's my first step or first hide statement for that. Define, define correctly for me and an OK on it. So now it says hide when the switch is not equal to cross table. If it is cross table, show it. So I'm doing the reverse logic. Okay. That takes care of that one. Okay. Then we'll go back to the second one over here. And now it's hiding it. We don't know what the switch is set to, but that's okay. But the second one down here, the vertical table, we'll go to format. Again, I could have gone to hide directly, but I like having the long drawn out window. I always talk about this with people. If you can give me a case when you use the hide always, never seen it used. I'm sure there is, but uh, I always get a kick out of that one. If you're always hiding it. Why are you putting it in there? But there are some secondary benefits, I know, somewhere along the way. So if this is the one for the vertical table. We've got to remember what my switch values were. So what I want to say is if my switch, I want to hide the vertical table block when the switch is not equal to, and it'll be double quote vertical table. Hopefully I've got these defined correctly. And we'll do an OK on that one. And hide what's a vertical table, and away we go. And so by default, uh, the switch is probably set to that one for right now. If you wanted to view any of these, even though you can't see them, one of the tricks when you're doing hiding, because things start disappearing, is if you go to structure only mode in the upper right hand corner here, it shows you the different structures. So I could look at this one here and say, let's go back to format chart or format table. Let's make sure I got it defined correctly. You know, I did define it cross table okay, for that one, so that is correct. It's not equal to. That's a little backdoor secret so that you can get to your data and get to your blocks to see what they're doing. Okay. So I don't know what the input control is. It must be uh, set to, in this case, it must be set to vertical table. Actually, it is because that was my default. Next block, the 3D column chart, remembering how I defined it, format chart. Okay. And on the format chart of the window here, what we're going to do is we're going to hide when the following is true. Real simple, basic logic. One thing I did not expand on a little bit because of the being a presentation a bit shorter on time, but I often will do this in our, one of our training classes as a bonus, is I like to rename my blocks. You don't have to call them block one, two, three, four, or chart block or whatever. Normally what I, what I would do in this case is I would rename this vertical table block or horizontal or, or cross table block or pie chart or whatever, to help document it, make it easier to follow what's going on. So that's a little trick you can pick up along the way as well. So now what we're going to do is the same thing. We'll do our switch. When switch is not equal to, I want to hide the cross table or the 3D column. When it's not equal to that one, double quote, 3D whoop, column chart. If I did not put in the right value, it won't show up, so I'll know that. And I can check it to make sure. If you notice, the hide logic is always the opposite. It's the reverse of what you think. You hide when this is true, not when it's false. So, but again, you can, you can work it any way that you want. So there it is. Now that one should disappear from the view window it, as you would expect it to. You go down to our very last one here for the pie chart. And oh, don't want format report. This is a block level 
feature. So I've always got to make sure I'm looking at format chart in this case for the, the two on the right side. Once again, using our hide logic, hide when the following is true for the formula, and this is going to be the pi option that we picked. So once again, switch. Oh, get it up there, guys. Put the switch in there. Switch not equal to and double quote pi. Try to make as much of my features self-documenting by virtue of how I name them and so on. That one. Okay. And I do an OK on it. There's my logic. When the switch is not equal to pie chart, that's when you hide it. When it is, it will show up. Okay. And lo and behold, that one should disappear from the window as well. So the reason that you see the vertical table is when I first defined the input control for switch, as we just defined, um, we set it up so that it had a default. And I always wanted to have the vertical table as a default starting point rather than a blank tab, nothing on it. It could have been the pie chart. It could have been anyone that you want. It could have been something different when you want to try to stick with what we've got here right now. So now if I go to the left side and I open up my little input control feature on the left, which is very easily done, and it says vertical table. Well, let's take the vertical table and move it up, right up to maybe right there. That's a good place for it. And I said, well, what if I don't want the vertical table? What if I want a cross table? So now the cross table, I'll move that down. That was already positioned up there earlier. So now what it did, it was it literally hiding the one behind it. But we want to stack all four up. So now if I go down to the pie chart, pie chart shows up, but it's down here. It's not where I want it. But I set them all up individually. Now I'm going to move this one on top. And again, you can layer it out any different type of format that you want. But I wanted them stacked. I wanted them layered. Okay. And I go back to the 3D column chart right here. And there's a problem with it, and I know exactly what it was. I could see what it was, the spelling on it. So what I need to do is I need to take a look at that one. So let me go to design, structure only, and we'll take this one here. There, there's a t I mistyped it. I saw that when I typed it in, and I realized it would come back later, so it was a good little lesson in here. So you see 3D column. I got column mis misspelled. And it should be a lowercase to match because that's typically how it works. It does look for matching in this type of setup. 3D column chart should work. I remember making a mental note when I saw it. Look how the ability to look at the structure only gives us the ability to see all of our layers again as, as they come out. Okay. So where's our input control now? It says 3D column. There's my 3D column. And lo and behold, here we go. So as I pick through my different options, I want a vertical table. Now uh, I want a cross table. Now maybe I want to make that one a, a pie chart. Or I want to make it a 3D column chart. Okay. As I do that, it worked my way through. Now the all option isn't set up. When I do an all, there's nothing showing up. Here's where it got tricky. I said, well, how in the world can I show all of them they can't be on top of each other. Uh, so what I, that's why I duplicated all of the report blocks that you saw here uh, when I created the original set. And when I duplicated the report tab, I created four identical ones over here on the second tab. So what I need to do is bring those back to the first tab, drop them back on top, but next to each other, and then hide those except when it's an all option. So you have a double set of charts and reports, okay? The individual ones that we see as we work through our input controls already here, but we're going, to do, we're going to take the second set on the second report tab, and that'll be the all option. We'll show all of them laid out like you see right here. So for report number one, I do need it to be blank. Because what I'm going to do, there's different ways you can do this, multiple copies, all kinds of different ways. Here's how I'm going to do it, just for simplicity's sake. I'm just going to copy these blocks. Let me just take these two. We'll do a copy. I could actually get rid of them, but we'll do a copy on them, and we'll go back to report tab number one. And right now, since I've got the all option, everything's hidden. We'll paste these in. And I've got my vertical table right underneath. I did two at once. There's my vertical table and my cross table up here, a little bit tight on space, but we can move it up a little bit. I know when I copy and paste blocks, it does that sometimes. Let's get this other one here down out of the way. So it's hidden away from everybody. Not quite sure why it does it that way, but it does. 
Uh, let's get this one up a little bit more. 19, these other blocks right on top. Yeah, I should have done them one at a time. I remember doing that now. And now we've got both of them there. Wanted to highlight something real quick for you, little things that I like to bring up. Notice in the vertical table, it was year, state, sales, rental, county, sold, and margin. I threw a break in on year. Notice the automatic subtotals. That was an SP6 or 7 feature that was introduced in 4.2. You automatically get those now, but you don't get the grand total. If you want the grand total at the bottom, a little trick, cover this in our training, is if you go back to format table and you want to add the grand total in, it's called a table footer. So I've actually mentioned this in some of my other webinars that I've done as well, but some of the little things that come in. So now what we're doing is we got to go back to our report tab and also copy in the two chart blocks, all right? And then set them up for the all options so we have that as well. So we'll take the, uh, we'll take the 3D column, one of my favorites, and we'll put that back on report number one. This is just one of multiple ways you could have done it. So before anybody says, well, you could have done this or that, it just a variety of different ways. And then I go back and grab the other one. And for this one here, we'll do a copy. And over to report number one, and we'll do a paste here as well. Part of the reason I wanted to do it more along these lines is I wanted to be able to lay it out how I want it to look. And if I had, without that all option in there, one of them would have shown up. and It would have interfered with me trying to build these, as you see on the fly. Let's get this one down a little bit. I think we're good to go there. And they're fine where they are for that one. Okay. So now what I need to do is I don't care about rep the second report tab anymore. All it did is hold the, the set of all of the report blocks and chart blocks that we were going to use. So right now I'm sitting on report tab number one, and I'm looking at four blocks at the same time. And you all know what's going on behind the scenes. There's four sets of these behind stacked up on the left side here, but they're being controlled by my input control. But look how easy that was to set up. Look how easy that was. So now for this set, we do it a little bit differently. What we want to do is format table. We want to do another hide. And we want to hide this one if, if it's um, not equal to all. So if my switch, come on guys, put it up there. Sometimes it gets a little lazy on it. Equal to, so equals, where's my switch here? My switch. Just being temperamental. When my switch is not equal to, we'll do a double quote, all, double quote. So if I don't select all, so if the switch is not equal to all, that block's gonna hide, okay? And we're going to do the same thing for all four of these, exactly the same way as well. Okay. So if we go back, whoop, not, not quite at format table, where I need to be for this block. Format table is your old block properties from yesteryear and earlier versions of Webby. Same hide logic, hide when the following is true. We go over to the FX button over to here, and we said when we want our switch is not equal to all. For that one, that one looks good. We'll just go with that one. We'll do the same thing for the 3D column chart. Oh, got the other layout that I didn't want. Format chart again. Some of these, if you would have created it in one block and duplicated or replicated the block, it'll carry this type of feature across. And I'm doing it one at a time for each one. So once again, when switch, come on guys, put it in there not equal to, there's your not equal to, double quote all. Well, got it spelled off so it won't work that way. Make sure I get it in there right, or that will not work. There's my all again for that one. And we'll do the pie chart on the bottom as well. We'll do a similar thing, format chart, and we'll do a hide when the following is true. And once again, take advantage of this logic. We'll do it where switch is not equal to our all. And we'll check mark it in there to make sure it goes in there correctly. And we'll close that one all out and close that one all out. So now that I've got an all option, they all show up that way, okay? But if I go in and pick vertical table, 
it's only going to show the vertical table. When I select the cross table, apologize for the slowness, but it does that. When I select the pie chart, it does it that way. When I select the uh, D column chart, it does it that way. But then I go a step further and I do an all, and lo and behold, the all brings in all four of them. All right. You probably could have done some fancy thing along the ways of uh, uh, dynamic positioning and all. I've done stuff like that in the past, but it gets very, very tricky, very difficult sometimes to manage it. So you want to be really careful with that. So now what I want to do is we've got it working very, very well. And hopefully you see the simplicity of it, all the hide logic and stuff that's on it. Now I'm trying to find my little reference handout that I have for it. I want to show you how we could put a marquee in there. And thank you to my friends from Oakland County. I think uh, uh, Chuck and Pat are out there once again for uh, introdu first introducing this particular feature. What I want to do is for each of the individual reports, not the all options, but when they show an individual one, whether it's a report or a chart, I want a little marquee across the top to come across that says select all to see all, something like that. So select all to see all. All right. So to do that, what I'm going to do is create a, a, a formula. I'm going to do it as a formula because I want to make this dynamic and be able to hide it. So I'm going to put in a blank cell. We'll put the cell right in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the formula. And you've seen me demonstrate this in my advanced reporting presentation with master details and stoplights and all. It's very functionally carries over very nicely. What we have to do is type in the code into here that we need. And this is going to, I'm just going to type it right in off of the, uh, the code on this. I have a, uh, make sure I get it right. And it's, uh, HTML, it's very finicky, so bear with me. HTML, and then right square bracket, angle, or angle, whatever you want to call it. Left one, and it's M A R Q U E E, direction. Make sure I get that in there right, so bear with me. Direction equals left. And it requires the right angle bracket to close it out. And then it's and then I'm going to type in all the actual text. All equals report and charts. Report and charts. And then I do my M A R Q U E E for closing it out. Right carrot on the right angle bracket for that one. And then I need one the other way, so bear with me. And it's, um, let's see, the other one goes this way. Oh, it jumped on me. Where did it go? Let's make sure I got it in the right place, right here. This is a little finicky, so bear with me on it. It'll take a minute or two here. There it is. And it'll be slash HTML, right one to close it, and a right double quote. So let's hope I got it right. I'm usually pretty good about getting it on the first shot. But you never know. Okay, so it looks like see equals double quote. No, no, it's not right. Up here needs a uh, bracket that way. See if that fixes my problem for it. HTML it does. Now what I need to do is I need to make this cell go to format cell. and select read contents as HTML, and then we'll have to tweak it to get the exact syntax in there that I want for it. And lo and behold, I got it. Look at that. Thank you, Pat. You're out there. I think you're out there today, and Chuck as well. And you can get fancy with it, whatever else. If you get any other interesting ones on those, uh, I always like to give credit where credit is due. So I know you're still waiting for your commission check, but I'll... Uh, Extend a thank you, but look how easy that was to set up. And you could have more than one of those, but it's what I only wanted it to show up, uh, the, this cell to show up for when it's not equal to all. Because right now, if I go back to input controls, here's another tricky part of it. Why I did this as a cell is if I pick the all option, the marquee's still there. Oops, oops, it's not what we wanted. So, all kinds of little things you can think about to tweak it, modify it, enhance it make it a more interesting one. So, so what I did was I said, well, it's a cell instead of a table block or a chart block or whatever, who cares? I go to format cell, 
use the same general hide logic that we saw come up. Bring it up, guys. Hide when the following is true. So I want to hide it when it's when it's uh, uh, when it's equal to all in this case. So bring up the formula. So we want to hide this one when the switch. Come on, guys, drag it in there for me. When the switch is actually equal to double quote all double quote. So even the, the the little marquee feature does the same thing as well. So when I'm looking at an individual one, I don't expect to see it show up, and it doesn't. It's on the individual. I'm sorry, on the individual I do. But when I go to all, when I turn it off, and now I don't see the marquee across the top. And you can have mul multiple marquees and so on. I did it as a cell because I wanted to be able to selectively hide it, as you see there as well. Background-wise, you can do very easily. There's a background image feature here. I'll just show you briefly as well. Uh, let's see. The background image is right here. So I might pick the background image. I want to apply a, a, something to the background. I want it to be an appearance. I want it to be an image from a file. We'll add it. And we'll choose the file, just like I did with stoplights, except I'm going to a background image. We happen to have a real nice one out there that we put out there a long time ago to use for demonstration's sake. Now, I need to make sure, display-wise, you got to make sure you do a stretch. To stretch it to fill the whole report tab window, to stretch it all out. That's the one everybody misses. It's all part of our documentation flow. So now we have a nice, uh, when it does show up, it should be showing up here. Let's see. I know what happened. I did the background image on the freestanding cell. Oops. Instead of highlighting the background, I did it in the wrong place. So we'll use the undo to get, get that out of there. Hopefully it will. It added background to the cell only, which isn't quite what I was hoping to accomplish with it. There we go. What I wanted was in the white tab area here. So this is where I needed the background image. You gotta be careful what you highlight. Image from the file, we'll add it again. We'll choose it. I always got to remember to do that. The little things you forget about that are easily fixed. And we'll do an OK on it to there. Got to upload it first. Then I got to stretch it again. The display to be stretched so I see it all in the window. Little tricks like that you can do. We'll do an OK on it. And lo and behold, we should have a nice background image that gets applied all the way around it. And when I look at the all option, it's fancy as well. And when they all come up, we still see the background, but we don't see the marquee. So a lot of really cool stuff, not extremely difficult. Um, I try to simplify things for you. Uh, reporting is so powerful that people overcomplicate it too many times, trying to do too much at once instead of building it gradual. Well, this, again, was designed to make it easier for you to build input control gadgets and like you saw the combo box so that we can control what gets displayed and we can layer it and do all kinds of things now it's potentially a situation where i could have had a link in here i could have had a hyperlink where i click on the year 16 up here in this cross table and it jumps to another report tab and brings up a an extension of 2016 data interdocument linking was introduced back in sp5 or 6 so it allows me to click anywhere on a on a particular block and i can go to a different report tab all right. It's interesting because in Tableau, you create input controls to do similar things. We do that here in Webby, and they both do very similar kind of thing. So, again, you get an opportunity to see. And they're not a real long amount of time. So, I went through the whole thing to show it to you is uh, just to give you a feel for what you, you know, what you can do without making it extremely difficult. It really makes it nice. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open it up for question and answer. So, let me unmute everybody. If there's any, if you have any background noise behind you at your location, if you could please mute for me. So in case there's any noise, it won't interfere. But I'd like to be able to open it up for questions. Let me see if I get that one off. Mute them. Jenny's left. Full control can unmute. So I guess now it's up to you if you want to unmute. I gave you the ability to, to be able to uh, unmute. And let's get take questions from everybody. Anybody? I'm sure there's some questions out there. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. If you have any suggestions on this, you have my email, enhancements or things that I could add into it. Uh, again, I wanted to stress the simplicity of it, yet the complexity of it, and how those two fit together very nicely in Webby. 
And with a really, I think it's an awesome example uh, that you can do a lot of really cool things with. Anybody else out there? Okay, I mute all attendees. Yep, I think I did. Let's see, anybody else out there able to uh, unmute? I hope that we're not having an issue with that. I can unmute. Unmute. If you want to, if you want to unmute to ask questions, fire away. Any and all questions are fair game. If it's something not relevant to here, but I can answer, I will, or I'll be happy to research. Hi, Michael. When you were building the formulas, I could you yeah. have used the values operator to help with spelling? Did I what now? Did I what now? Could you have used the values operator? Yeah, I probably could have used values in that. It probably would have worked. Yeah. yeah. The whole trick was creating that dummy variable called switch that doesn't have anything. Uh oh, we're getting the echo. How do you create new background files? Background here? Yeah, how this do you get is, uh, those? This is a JPEG file that we put in, I believe. So we created a kernel. We just applied it to the background using the uh, uh, the feature for um, applying something to the background. Is it in the repository then, the VO repository? It's wherever you put it. I, you remember when I uploaded it, it asked me to point it to, I had to point to where it was in the map okay. in order to upload it. So if I do, let me do this. What if I wanted to do another one, background image? And it says image from a file. Edit. Now it says edit because I've already added one in. Now you identify where it is. So just make sure later on if you publish it to other people to use, that they're pointing also to the same place. Anybody else? Any other questions? Any other questions? Again, this is one of the number of collections that we put together. I don't have a question, but I just want to say that I thought that the empty air is the coolest thing ever. Thank you. I'm getting that echo. I'm not sure why we're getting that echo effect. It's hard for me to let me look at the questions and see if I can answer any in here. Nope, don't have any 3D spell column incorrectly. For yeah, somebody, I, yeah, I saw that. Thanks for letting me know. I knew when I created it that I had misspelled it and I knew it was going to come back to haunt me on that. But thank you for picking up on that. So, so really, I can't stress enough the simplicity of it all uh, the, the ability to build pretty complex reports and the you know, and 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 charts. And layer them in different ways. I mean, I could have had a double set on the left side and the right side layering both at the same time off the same input control gadget that it, I defined through a local variable or through multiples. There are endless possibilities, right? But it gives us, by using the input controls, it gives us dashboard like functionality. You do that a lot when you build your Tableau, when you build your visualizations, you put them in a container, you know, for a dashboard and, and you create your uh, input controls to drive it. That's the functionality we're doing here. Same concept. So mentally, you follow the same path, that same mental process, whether you're doing something in Webby or Tableau or both for that type of functionality. So I did pop up my contact information. If you'd like to drop me uh, an email with questions or things that you have or suggestions, or mainly questions that you might have at one time or another. In our normal training classes, in our advanced class, we recently expanded it now to include two or three of the custom best practice guides that we give out in our class. We give away about 40 of them in class. This is one of them. But we'll actually select two or three that we do as a group in the class. So you, and this is one of them you would be building in a class. Exactly what we just did, you would be building with me. We have uh, one on building very complex visualizations with linking and all, and of course, excelling it. If you missed my earlier webinars, the excelling it one, or ma managing your merging or advanced formatting, introducing stoplights and all. Again, I try to stress the simplicity of it because if you don't make it too difficult, look at what you can do. You can build some pretty slick things. And I really think this is a neat uh, example of what we did here with all the interaction where I, one simple little drop-down menu controls all the things that I get to see. 
including a flashing marquee on it as well. But yet, simple enough to do. Build my blocks, copy and paste and revise using Turn Into, stretch them all out, lay out your formatting, and really wasn't difficult. The hide logic is very, very straightforward as well. So I'm just trying to give you the a range of possibilities of what you could, could do with it as well. I'm always looking for suggestions for other little bells and whistles to add in. So if you think of something, again, let me know as well. Anybody else? Any questions? Don't forget we'll be offering the general public offerings coming up uh, in October. Uh, and Fernandez popped that up. Thank you to Celebrate again for hosting these. We've got a really great thing going, working with you guys and giving you presentations. Uh, the next topic I'm looking at doing, if anybody has an interest, is the magic of breaks. I have an entire presentation with all the wild, crazy things you can do with breaks. Multiple breaks, um, uh, how you can actually uh, do a, a ranking based on breaks. One of you asked a question on that. I have two ways I do that one. That might be a good next presentation. In fact, you could do me a favor and drop me a note and tell me what you'd like to see. We've stayed away from all of the universe information design topics. But if there are a lot of you that are interested in seeing a quick overview of the IDT or how does the universe design tool work, we'd be happy. Just let me know. We can squeeze it down into an hour. Be happy to share with you, um, you know, give you a nice overview on that, as well as Webby reporting functionality, too. Any other questions? We did good. I try to keep it in that 45-minute to an hour window, and I think we did. So just to make sure you get my information captured, yes. Question, can input control values be controlled by permissions, like uh, different users will see different values in that input control? I did not know the answer to that. When I checked with Steve from my staff, he said you can, that can be controlled that way. He clarified with me that it can, can be controlled that way through security, because that question came up. I didn't know, and I'm not involved with the security part of it, but he did say that that, uh, that, would, that would be applied, set up correctly. Yep. If there's any, if you have any more on that, just drop me a, a quick note on it. And I'll be happy to, uh, you know, we can uh, communicate with you some more detail level. So, well, good. Hopefully everybody enjoyed it. My contact information's up there again. Uh, the, the training sessions we offer, we started doing them in half day formats because of everybody working from home. So we do a basic course, two afternoons or two mornings, followed by intermediate, advanced, spread out. It's turned out to be phenomenal. You as a student get an extra half hour each day is our normal class window is three and a half hours, but by doing half day four hours, you get a whole extra half hour each day of content. And it makes it easy to accommodate your schedules. You know, we spread the half days, you know, maybe a Monday, Tuesday, and a Thursday, Friday, or something like that. And we're finding really great feedback from all of you, people like you out there. Some of you have been in the training or are coming up for training as well, but the half day really provides a, a nice way of breaking it up a little bit. It gives you a little time in between trying to practice or try out some of the things that you see, you know, as well. And again, the best practice guides, I recently added five new ones in. So my best practice collection now that you get if you do our training is now about 40. So uh, we've added some really, really good new, new uh, ones as well, some of which I just mentioned. So but keep my email handy. Don't be afraid to, try, to, cap, to get a hold of Ann via uh, email or follow up through, the, through their site as well. But we do have our next general public offering coming up uh, in early October to give people time to get approvals and all. A lot of people are taking advantage of the fact that since they're working out of their home anyways, but better time to get some training out of the way. And uh, so it's worked out very, very well for that too. So, all right, don't be afraid to contact me via phone, via email. Uh, you know I'm very good at getting back to you with uh, potential solutions to things you're trying to do. We want to thank you all for coming out. And do me a favor and let me know what other topics you would love to see. We pushed back on the design universe and information design because our feeling was a lot of you are mainly reporters. So if there's enough interest, we would be happy. And I could do a nice little quick overview of the UDT or IDT so you understand, you know, the concept of how a universe is built. So keep in mind there's some new plugins now that allow Tableau to read business objects universes and pull the data in directly. So not only can I do a lot of that in Webby, but I can also pull it out and push it into Tableau very easily, your Tableau uh, shop in your case. So I'll stick around here for the next 15, 20 minutes and take any other questions or, or anything you might have. But I can't thank you all enough for coming out again. 
We're getting really good turnouts for these and giving you a lot of, hopefully giving you something. I think each presentation that I do, I give you another little snippet of some stuff that you can do pretty easily as well. Anybody else? Okay, we'll, we'll close things out here. I'll leave that up for another couple of minutes and then we'll close it out. Thank you, Michael. All right, thank you all for attending. Uh, I appreciate it very much. And, and uh, I like to think that I gave you something of value, some good content. And, and I think I, in this case, we were able to accomplish that, which is good. So, all right, well, bid you all do. Thank you all for taking time out of your schedules. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I'm glad I was built the whole thing for you so we get appreciation for uh, what you can do. Thank All right, you, have a good rest of the week, everybody. All right, bye.